tape a halt. I was in a recovery program for approximately five years, and two years ago I quit the program and decided to wing it on my own, go cold turkey. But recently I found that my addiction to duct tape and my life in general has become, become unmanageable. And that's why I'm here at this DA meeting tonight. <laughs> I first became addicted to duct tape in my early 20s. I, I bought a roll of duct tape to tape up some, uh, ducts and ducting in my house. And from the first time I used duct tape, the, like the seductive zipper-like tearing of the duct tape, and that odor of the duct tape adhesive, I was hooked almost instantly. I, if I had used the whole roll and never used duct tape again, I probably would have been okay. But I had a roll, quarter of a roll left when I finished it. I put the roll on my workbench downstairs. And night after night, I would be laying in bed, haunted by this quarter roll of duct tape on my workbench downstairs, trying to think of what I could do with it, how I could put it to use and enjoy those intoxicating vibrations that came off it. And finally one morning I, I got up and came downstairs and I saw my wife's cookbook on the counter and the back of the cookbook had been ripped off and I knew immediately what, what I had to do. I went downstairs, got my roll of duct tape, came back up, measured off a piece, tore it off and stuck it to the spine of the book and it was perfect. You couldn't actually tell what the book was anymore, but <laughs> when you stuck it up in a, in a row of books on a shelf, the silver back made it stand out, and to me it was a thing of beauty. And from there on there was no stopping me, I just went crazy after that. I repaired everything. My wife's car had a leak in the windshield, no problem. I stripped, took off a strip of duct tape, snuck it to the windshield, problem solved. My neighbor had the tail light broken out of his car. No problem. I got a piece of red paper, taped it with duct tape. I have to admit, it was better than the original tail light. <laughs> and from then on, I just, it was nothing. I just, you couldn't stop me. I went around the neighborhood. I was like a superhero. I was fixing everything. I fixed broom handles. I fixed garden tools. I fixed wagons for the kids and bicycles. I taped a seat on my neighbor's bike. There was just no stopping me, but I could see that my family was becoming upset and distraught about my addiction to the duct tape. And finally, the, the whole thing came to a head in a winter uh, in winter time. My family had decided to hold an intervention, and what it brought it to a head was there had been. A, a big dump of snow. Like, there was so much snow on the driveway that I couldn't get my car out. So what I decided to do is I got a, a 2 by 12 piece of wood and I duct taped that to the front of my car. <laughs> and the concept was good. Like it was a good idea. But the problem was that it was cold and the moisture from the snow caused the duct tape not to stick. So when I got in the car and it slowly eased into the snow and then accelerated. The piece of wood came off and rolled under the front tires and shot out sideways and went in through the basement window. <laughs> <laughs> and that was, that was the last straw for my family. And they called me aside and they said, if I don't get into a recovery program and get myself clean and sober, that they were gonna put me on the Dr. Phil show. <laughs> And that was when I knew that I had a serious problem because no man who goes on the Dr. Phil show has anything but a serious problem. <laughs> so I, I got in a program the next day. I was the star of the program. For five years, I never missed one weekly meeting. I did my 12 steps in two weeks. I got myself a sponsor. I sponsored other people. I chaired meetings, but after five years, I got to the point where I felt that I was cured. 
I didn't need the support of the program anymore, so I quit. And for two years, things went really well. I, I didn't have any relapses. But I have to admit, I did keep a roll of duct tape in the trunk of my car under the spare tire, just in case of an emergency, in case I absolutely had to have it fixed. And about two weeks ago, I was working in my office, and the roller came off of my office chair. And I wasn't thinking, I just I didn't know what I was doing. I just, next thing I knew, there I was with a roll of duct tape in my hand, and I duct taped the roller back on the chair. And it looked pretty good. I mean, you could hardly tell it had been repaired except for this big wad of duct tape on one leg. And I thought, well, it's my chair. It's, who can it hurt? And you couldn't actually put any weight on it. You could, you could sort of ease into it a bit. If you kept the weight on your legs, it worked fine. And you could roll it around a bit. As long as you put too much weight on it, it was okay. And that was fine. But then out of the blue, my wife's sister, Donna, and her husband, Norm, came to visit. And they had two big dogs. And the first night, after supper, they took their big dogs for a walk on leashes. And as they were walking up the, the lane, a deer jumped up and spooked the dogs. And the dogs got all flustered, and they, they circled around Donna, pulled her off her legs. And the next thing we knew, Donna had a broken foot on one side and a broken ankle on the other side. So Norm put her in the truck and rushed her to the emergency. A couple hours later, he came back. Donna was still groggy from the painkillers and whatnot. And my wife decided that we needed some way to roll Donna around so that she wouldn't have to hobble around on her cast. Before I could stop, it wasn't my fault, but before I could stop Norm, he went into my office and brought my chair up. And then he put, picked Donna up and set her in the chair. And then, I, I'm telling you, it wasn't my fault. One leg went that way, the chair went that way, Donna went that way, and then that way, and she was passed out on the floor. My wife screamed, and Norm was standing there with a confused look on his face. And that was when I got my final ultimatum. Either I get back in the program, or it's Dr. Phil for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs>